Good evening and welcome to the Conservation Commission meeting for Monday, February 6, 2023. Time is 7 p.m. First item on the agenda, discussion, orders to be signed, 83 Island Road, 21 Birch Street, 19 Birch Street. I will circulate those. Uh, meeting minutes, October 17th and November 7th. We have a moment to review those. I reviewed one of them. Okay. Do we want to take a moment to look at them? I looked at October 17th. Mm -hmm. uh, looks good. So. I wasn't here. Uh, okay, so we're going to hold that until Katie Grace gets here. So I have enough votes. Right? I need three. No. Four. I need four. Okay. And then the November 7th? I was not here. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Maybe not. All right, so let's hold these until Katie Grace gets here. Okay. Next item is Mass DEP letter notice of a site visit for White and Reservoir. Steve, did you want to say anything on that item? Not hearing that Steve wants to say anything about the site visit. There was not a site visit? There was. DEP went away in res. No. They, no? They changed it from a site visit to a remote meeting. A Zoom. Zoom meeting. Okay. Yes. Okay. Which I did attend. Okay. All right. Did you want to... I'm looking for the mail. So the um, Whiten's Reservoir is healing. Mm -hmm. order conditions as um, signed by the Conservation Commission. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe I was here the night that that was uh, approved and the order conditions were um, approved. Yep. So I really couldn't speak to that. And their primary question or one of their primary questions was did the Conservation Commission mean for this letter to be included as part of the requirements of the conditions. Okay. And I really couldn't speak to that. Okay. Um, the other concerns by the proponent was that um, there was, uh, because within that letter there was some requirements for them to do some monitoring, which they were not, didn't feel should be necessary and shouldn't continue for as long as what, um, I don't think there was a sunset clause okay. on the monitoring. And um, there's also some concern about the request for a lesser uh, drawdown, I believe. So um, it came at, at the uh, end of the meeting. It was, um, I think it was determined that the, uh, the, the council for the proponent was going to get together with the um, person from MIFA, is that right? Um, natural heritage. Natural heritage. And, okay. Yeah. Natural heritage and discuss the letter, I believe, okay. with them and the requirements for it. Okay. So. All right. So there was no um, no decisions made. Okay. In that meeting, and they are still going to schedule a site visit because they do want to see the pond with the water drawn down before it starts to come back up. So there will still there is going to be a site visit that's going to be held sometime towards the end of February. Okay, perfect. So my interpretation under our general conditions, number three, this order does not relieve the permittee or any other person of the necessity of complying with all other applicable federal, state, or local statutes, ordinances, bylaws, or regulations. So the way that we viewed document lists, that could possibly be considered as a clerical error as a missed document. 
but the last time we did a natural heritage project, I think it was on West Street, and they have separate documentation, separate regulations that need to be met. And I think this board just simply says you have to meet all everything that is required of you under the law. Even if it's not written out again in our order. Mm -hmm. So we, we are in charge of our bylaws in the Wetlands Protection Act laws. If there's other people that are involved, MEPA, MISA, Natural Heritage, all those other conditions that are subject to this project would be also complied with. Steve, did you want to add anything? Is he having trouble? Steve, I gotta apologize. I, I missed the beginning because my my computer was on silent, but um I don't know if you want to wait till so you're talking about Whitens Reservoir? Yeah, I think simply our general conditions under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, not the town bylaw conditions make it clear that any other applicable rules or regulations or requirements placed on the permittee would need to be met also. Right, so I, to that, you know, Brian's gonna show up later, maybe we can just clarify with him. I really don't know what the particular question is that they're, they're looking for, so I know maybe he can just, I don't wanna misstate okay. something. So we can table this, and Mark did state that the question was, did we mean to leave out the last letter from Natural Heritage? They said something like the letter came like a few days before the meeting. It wasn't something yeah. that we had seen. Okay. You might not even have seen it. I'm not really even sure. Okay. All right. So we can hold on that. Number three. Yeah. We'll just table it until attorney winner arrives. Um, emergency order issued for sure road culvert. We are going to table that until attorney winner arrives as he has been um, in charge of that project since I believe last August. So he can give us an update. I did request uh, it in a box with a bow on it for this meeting. And looking at the amount of paper that was submitted today after the deadline hmm. of submittal yeah. of 2-2, I, and I did already speak to late submittal of information. Um, we will we will take this up once he gets here, but it's not something that is reasonable to review hours before the meeting. So, uh, request for certificate of compliance, 115 Shore Road, that we are going to table. Uh, Gene Lawrence, Shore Road 115 Compliance. We're going to table until our attorney arrives. Request for a certificate of compliance, 225 U Street. So, is anyone here presenting on behalf of 225U? So, everybody should have a copy of the ASBO plan in their binder on their backpack, whatever tab that is. Eight. Number eight. Okay. Did you want to play a video, Steve? It's going to come over choppy, but I have a video of the of the site. Um, let me know when you want to see it. Sure. And a quick question: Do you have the uh, letter of substantial compliance from the engineer? I 
I don't know if they submitted a letter. Um, they did all they basically they did submit a check mark that it is substantially complete. Um, I did let them know a couple of issues I have, and you can see the video is that you know pretty much the grass is not even germinated yet. Um, and if when you, if I can play the video, there is a. It's outside the jurisdiction of the commission, but you'll see that there is uh, some ponding along the right side, which was a concern. Oh, you know what? I got the wrong video, sorry. Hang on one second. So here's the video of the, of the site. When is this video from? Uh, last Wednesday, maybe? Okay. Wednesday or Thursday, might, might be last Thursday. Sure, I think the jurisdiction area goes right to the uh, right where the house is. But there is, you know, there's no germination, so I let the uh, the contractor know that. I did get a call from the owner, the, the potential owner, and the real estate agent regarding the bonding area. So I told them they could show up tonight and ask any questions they want. The, the contractor is aware of it. Yeah, we're here too. If you can hear me. Who's speaking, please? My name's Roger Gag, and I'm owner of that uh, piece of land. Okay, thank you. Um, who's Terrence Joyce and Catherine Berlinson? Yeah, those are our, uh, our buyers. Oh, okay. Do you know where the source of the flooding is coming from? Of the water? Yes, the ponding. Yeah, it's coming in off the uh, the street and in the back. It was just we had a little bit. We had those torrential rains for a couple weeks, basically. The ground was saturated, so I mean it, it's all gone now. But that uh, that was probably the worst of it right there at that day. And we talked to the. Uh, our buyers about uh, doing a little bit of regrading on the side come spring. Uh, they're fine with our with our plan for that. And uh, yeah, like I said, it, it's it's gone now. Yeah, we see on the video some erosion, mm -hmm. no grass, and yeah, looks yeah, like flooding off the street. Trying to stabilize things. What did you do? We had high proceeded it. Uh, just to try and stabilize over the winter, but you know, it, uh, we still had a little bit of erosion. Okay, what was the date of the hydro seeding? Uh, probably beginning of November, early November. And you received a certificate of compliance from Board of Health for the septic? Yep. We know we're going to have to go back and get a full compliance once the grass is established. We're just looking to get this to the point where we can close on the house next week. I'm sorry, who's speaking? Sorry, name and address. Name and addresses. Yeah, we're the builders. Okay. Raj, Raj, Jeff. Okay. Sure. I'm trying to figure out where the wetlands are. Right back here, behind, behind the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's some oh. runoff. Yeah, there's some runoff happening on this right here. Uh, the ponding that's at the side of the house near the driveway, mm -hmm. 
it looks like water, as you said, is coming off the road, but then it doesn't uh, move from that area. How are you planning to relieve that area of the water? If you are. Well, we're going to uh, we're going to regrade a little bit, uh, probably past those existing waddles, bring up that area, and then uh, do a bit more of a swale as it goes past the side of the garage, and that should just about eliminate any potential bonding there. I mean that those torrential rains we had were the first time there been any puddling there whatsoever since we started the project. So. Uh, the ground was just saturated, but uh, well, we're going to do our best to eliminate everything. So you said you want to take the water towards the back of the house? Is that what you said? And isn't that where the wetlands and the buffer are? Well, that's where the water's been draining before we started working there. What was that market? Just a natural slope of the land. Because there was no proposed rain. So there was no proposed grading around the septic, and now it looks like it's tilted towards that pocket. Well, again, we went by the engineer's plan. That's uh, how we laid things out. for the septic aren't exact, but similar. Mm. When you say they're not exact? Um, yeah, there's a, there's a red number and a black number. The black number is what was proposed, like uh, the four inch invert at the structure. It says 101.17 was proposed and the elevation is 100.79. So, you know, four tenths difference approximately mm -hmm. and that's what they all seem you know they all seem to be about a four tenths difference mm -hmm. uh, kind of pitched to that spot though top of the tank 101.55 existing I don't know what was proposed I don't see that Questions? So is there anything else that we can do before the grass grows to prevent all that water from like more erosion control or well it's outside our jurisdiction. But the the ground does the yard does not look stabilized at this moment. So we don't have a letter of substantial compliance from the engineer. It's been checked, but there's no letter in the packet as far as Steve is telling us. So we really, we really can't give the letter or give them compliance, then, right? I think that the ruts, the erosion ruts, and no vegetation. Is there any vegetation growing, Mr. Gagnon? There, there's a little bit, but like I said, we're not, we're not looking to get a, a release. We know we're gonna have to go back once the grass is established in the spring. To, right. You know, but yeah. We're just looking to get somewhat of a temporary, or you know, something that we can we can close on the house next week. So we we know that you know it has to establish before we go back in front of you guys again to uh, to get a full release. Yeah, but and as far as any kind of germination, it's very minor. Okay. Thank you. So, Steve, what are the options for the applicant? Is he looking for just the uh, what needs to be completed, and then so when you come back, you know that's all that the commission's going to look at. Um, I don't know if you, that would be acceptable. We're, I don't think the commission's going to uphold the occupancy permit. If that's what you're worried about. Correct. Yeah, we just want to make sure that everything is uh, acceptable. Well, it's not. We're, the re, we're not going to be able to vote on the request to issue because the, the earth is not stabilized. But once it is, once it's growing and there's no longer the ponding, then we can absolutely issue the certificate of compliance. It's just a bit. Back at that point, yeah, it's just a bit early. 
Understood. And if I, I would say if it was hydro seeded, maybe a little bit earlier could have point, stabilized. Point it's, like, it's, like, it's like anything else. You, you, you try to get everything done yeah, in sequence, and sometimes yeah. you run out of time. No, and I we understand. We're doing our best to get everything done before the winter set in. Okay. Yeah. And I'd be curious to see if this is still going to be flooding. It's been kind of mounded, and I'd be curious if uh, if it's absolutely road runoff, if a berm could be um, installed to prevent that water from coming to the property. I don't know if it's too if the driveway entrance is too low. Yeah, Maybe no, it has nothing to do with, with the driveway that we put in. Okay. It, uh, the, the land also pitches down from the from the house on the side of us. Okay. It's all it's all pitched down. There's really not a whole lot. It, there's just a natural low area there. Yeah, it looks like a gully. Our driveway and our grading was higher than than U Street itself. Okay. I did everything we, I did everything that we could do on our own property to prevent it, but I can't I can't do anything from from the next side over. Okay. Okay. I see. Um, I mean, I'm looking at the grades. It looks like the, the pr existing prior to the construction, the, the water wanted to go from the right to the left on the property. And now the, the house and the driveway are blocking it from doing that, which is why you're getting that ponding on the right side of the driveway. Yeah, you can see in the second picture, there's some um, sediment into the driveway. Back well, up. yeah, that yes, that's from the upper part of where the, where the septic is. I mean, okay. You know, again, it, you know, I think since the beginning of uh, or the middle of December, we've had like 13 inches of rain. It, mm -hmm. It's just been a, a wet season. That, Absolutely. Unfortunately, that nothing's frozen, and we you know we've been dealing with, with that. But yeah. Um, you know, obviously, come spring, all that will be touched up. The seed will be will be put back down again, and you know we will we'll get things under control. Okay, perfect. I just be careful. I just don't want you to, um, you know, to try to fill a lot to push this water around the back of the house, no, which is where the yeah, wetlands no, are. No, 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 that's not our intention, though. Okay. Just try to lessen that little bit of a hole there. That's Here. Right. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much for coming in. No, thank you. Thank, good luck. Number number four, I think Art Allen's here, and I don't know. I believe uh, I don't know if some of the engineers are here for Oak Street too. Okay, let me take sixty seven Pine Street okay. next. And if you see Katie Grace come on, just let me know, okay? Because I can't really see too well. Okay. Do you want to give us a little update on this? Sure, can you hear me? Yes. So here's the, can you see the map, the uh, town GIS? Yes. So this is uh, down by Pine Street, right across from our Orange Street is on Pine Street. Um, there's, a, there's a little stream that comes through here, and a little, there's a little wet area here within 100. The, the owner, the new owner was told by the previous owner, and I think he might be in the audience tonight, that he's, gonna, he's logging all these pines. You can't barely see his, his home, but it's stuck in the middle here. Um, he told me that he was instructed to stay 100 feet away. Unfortunately, I think his some of the blood of the trees fell within the buffer zone, and then the guy might have taken a few of the trees within the buffer zone. Um, so this is where the location is. Let me see if I can show you the trees. See the picture come up? 
Not yet. How about now? Yes. Yes. So you have the wetlands along the along the right here. This is kind of where his house is. This is outside the hundred foot buffer. Pretty much he's where he's walking is pretty much maybe where the hundred foot buffer is, maybe where this path is. He's in the audience if he wants to speak, I think he should be. Mm-hmm. And so two or three maybe trees, pines on this side have been taken down. And then he's clearing. I don't know if I could just go to the next photo, but let's see if I can get the video. Street. Well, you're pulling that up. There you go. So here's here's the video. So here's the the house. I think he might be trying to take all these pines down on the left. And then up in this pocket here, the previous owner about 15 years ago, all these logs are from about 15 years ago where they got a season assist by the conservation commission for clearing in the buffer. So I think that owner told them who, when he purchased the property to at least stay a hundred feet away. <laughs> that stream was, is, is perennial on USGS map and, and uh, civil engineer came in a few years ago and designated it to be intermittent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Pretty good. My name is Avid Masu, or I can call Masu. Mm -hmm. uh, when we bought the property, we want to uh, make a farm. Mm -hmm. And the owner tried to fill me in as much as he could. Mm -hmm. And I ask as much questions uh, as I could. I ask about the trees. Mm -hmm. And he told me, any, it's, if you look at the picture on the right, you have like a road, mm -hmm. it's a pit which, um, what is the word? Which we can distinctly see there, where the, the side, he said, anything on the right side you cannot remove. Because if you need something to be removed, you have to go to the town and ask them to, to if you can cut down. But uh, on the left side of the property, you can uh, cut anything else you need to cut. Mm -hmm. I explained to him my plans for that is not to raise uh, pines, but to uh, make a farm like uh, fruit trees, uh, uh, grapes, and some animal shoe, and that's what I'm doing. And and I wasn't I wasn't planning to do anything now, but opportunity come. I have a brother-in-law from Brazil, which came and he used to be cutting 500 trees for a paper uh, in, industry. Mm -hmm. And he have a lot of experience. He offered because he's not working in landscape. He does not have nothing to do. Um, and he offered to come and cut for me. Um, and I. I said, yeah, sure. And I explained to him what I was told before. Do not cut, touch any tree on the right side. And when Steve was there, I told, I told Steve uh, we didn't cut anything in the, like the owner told me before on, on a 100 feet margin from the, the stream. And I even asked him to come so I can show him nothing was cut. Mm -hmm. And I noticed. Uh, before even the Steve see I noticed and they mentioned this is fresh cut on the right side. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting. I'm not there all the time, I have to work too. And I I, I was surprised and shocked to be quite honest with you. When the Steve left I went to him and I asked him why he cut that tree when they said nothing on the right side could be cut it. He said when they cut the tree on the left side, any of those trees, if you see how tall they are, some of those trees 160 feet. Mm -hmm. Uh, the tree fall on the side and broke the limbs and some of the top of the, the tree. So he, instead he have those trees hanging, which would be uh, dangerous for him or anybody walking around, he cut that tree. If I'm not mistaken, he cut three trees, one, one big tree about maybe two and a half, uh, maybe, no, two, yeah, maybe two and a half uh, feet around. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Two more is smallest, but I can tell for sure how many there was, because when the tree fall, uh, the branches 
broke off from the tree and you barely can see the ground the way it is right now. And I still have, not, not on the right side, but on the left side, I still have a bunch of trees I have to cut. One of the major things, and that I, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I can, I, since I bought the property, uh, uh, it's very hard even to sleep some nights because those trees, any of those trees you see over there, if you fall, you can hit my home. And uh, I welcome any of you to come over there and take a look. It, that's the main, one of the main reasons I was doing this right now. Um, uh, I was planning to do this, but I was planning to hire a company to do it. Because mm -hmm. it, it would be, um, but I, the, financially I, 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 uh, I, I wasn't prepared for that. I probably would have to wait like maybe a year or two more because my wife got sick and, and she has been out of work and for, for the past two years. Okay, and so. And that's pretty much what it is. Okay, okay, so do you know where the wetland edge is of the stream? What do you mean wetland? Have you been to the stream? Oh yes. Okay, so you can pull a 100 foot tape okay, from that I, side. That's what I did. And you marked it in the field. It, there's flags or some sort of marking stakes where the 100 is. Nothing that I noticed. The, the way no, I, did you do it, is what I'm asking. Oh. So no, how do you know there's three trees? Because I, I could see the one I was told you, Steve. Uh, I, I showed to Steve. And the day Steve went there, uh, I think it was Sunday, maybe. Uh, I was in the back cleaning the, the trees from the trees already fall. I went to the, to the, to the, to the stream to see if he, how many trees we cut, we cut, or he cut. Because I didn't, I think I don't cut trees, I don't, I don't know, I barely know how to create a, a chainsaw. I went to see what he, what else he cut more. Okay. And uh, I noticed, like I said, a small, maybe that, maybe that big, maybe, maybe less than 12 inches, mm -hmm. maybe 10 inches. I saw that big one at first when the sheep was there, and I didn't see anything bigger. But again, um, a lot of the ground is covered by branches, mm -hmm. and those branches is the size of, of my leg, they're about the, 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 that big, those. I, I can't see much. Okay. The, the ones I saw and I can tell you about it mm -hmm. is about three trees. Okay. Uh, Steve, do we have any plans of this property with the resource areas? So, I mean, the first step is we pull a tape for 100 and stay 105 feet away. Well, the first step is we have to know where the wetland is to pull a tape, though. Right. It but if it's a clear, bank. if it's the bank, that's why I'm asking if, I mean, I don't know if there's associated uh, BBW, because if he got a cease and desist before the previous owner, maybe there's some sort of evidence. Right. Because we can't even tell. I mean, I can't tell from the pine grove where anything is, or if there's one tree, three trees, ten trees. Yeah. So you have to pull, you have to pull your distance and you have to stay outside the 100. I, what I did when the Steve was there, before the Steve got there, I was going by what the owner told me. Anything on the right side cannot be cut. It. Right, and there I and understand there I, was an accident where it took out the other tr the tree fell from the left yes, to the right. Yeah, yeah. There's a little pond. It's, it's an too. accident. That's adjacent. Is it a, a bank was, edge? I showed him that area, and I told him that's a resource area too. So step one is to pull a tape measure to 100 and go 105 if it's if it's not flagged or if it's a boarding vegetated wetland it's a different story if it's just a is it a stream just a defined stream channel it's pretty defined yeah okay so um steve do you have anything to add yeah, I would just give him himself plenty of buffer. If he starts cutting some trees in the back of his lot, he's got a big lot that he just gives himself a lot of leeway. How many acres is it? 10 point, uh, 
I believe it's 10 point, point 0.5, what am I lying? Okay. Central. Okay. But it's something around that, 10 All right. acres. Okay. A little over 10 acres. Okay. There is an option for a forest cutting plan. And also. I have a question too. Um, last year, my wife and I uh, tried to plant some corn and we make a, a garden, mm -hmm. but nothing grew out of it. Okay. Um, there is a bunch of also dead trees on the right side, but I wasn't planning to mess with them or come to you guys to ask anything because I have so much things to do before that. Mm -hmm. um, and that is some of those trees. Dead trees can definitely fell on on my chicken coop mm -hmm. or my my I don't believe it would be would be hitting my house to be honest with you. But um, my question is as I am here instead of come back again or eventually I'm gonna have to come back and anyway. mm -hmm. is there anything I can do to take those trees down and plant a smaller tree instead so we can have things growing there? Because by the experience, the only thing I can think of, I did everything by the book when the, we did plant those, those gardens and those corns, as and and, and nothing grows. But the only thing I can think about is is the shade from the the trees around, mm -hmm. not only the trees on the left side, which I was told they could cut down, is also on the right side. I'm not saying clear everything and not leaving everything to, uh, with, uh, with trees, which would be unfair. But plant trees, but in the what, to be honest, I, I had a, a lot of things in my mind. One of those is instead I have uh, pine trees, which give nothing to the, to, the, um, to the animals around, not the my animals, but uh, Sylvester. You understand? Uh, the birds? Wild animals, yes. Yeah. Like, I noticed, uh, I never saw, but I noticed um, things which indicated that it's maybe a bear around. I've been seeing, uh, but basically what I want to do is plant the trees which can give food to these animals and, and not grow so much which is going to be on the way for me to do the things I want to do, like uh, plant corn and uh, everything else we have planned to, to do there. Right. I understand. You yes? Could, you, could, you could file an ANRAD, you could file an RDA if you wanted to just to verify for himself to stay out of the jurisdiction of the commission. You could have someone come in and just flag the resource areas on his own and just stay completely out of them. Um, they want to be approved, but you'd get an idea of where they are. Right. Uh, I think the first step would probably be check uh, Board of Health to see okay. if there's a septic plan with the wetlands shown on it. Is this, would his house or anything have been in the 100? Steve? What's it? Would any activity to build the house be within the 100? That well, it's one of those old uh, mobile home, homes that's been here for a while. Oh, okay. I mean, I would check Board of Health, see if there's anything there, and then Steve's uh, suggesting. You spoke a little bit. The Board of Health. I understand yeah. board, of health, board of Health. What are they are uh, uh, responsible for? Septic systems oh, okay. and wells. Okay, okay. I do have both of them. You have the plan, septic a system. big plan? Yeah. yeah. I have a septic system yeah. and a, a, a well as well. Okay, so step one, we need to determine where the resource areas are. Okay. If you're having trouble or you don't know where they are, you need to stay way far away then because you know where the stream is. I know, yeah. So Steve is suggesting hire someone to flag the wetlands so that you'll know that you're absolutely outside the 100. If you want to do any activity like you're talking about within the 100, you could do a request for determination of applicability, RDA. And you would come here and you would say, okay, here's where the wetland is. This is what I, my plan to do, planting your farm, everything, all the activity from zero to 100, from the stream to 100, this is what you want to do. And you could come back and ask us. So it's a permit. And everything else from after the 100? Yes, you don't I need do permission. I need to be done. Okay. Yes, but the question is, where is the 100? Okay, so that you can stay outside I understand. of it. The area. And how do I do that? Should I hire someone that's already saying? Yes. Okay. Yep. And what kind of professional does that? Um, a wetland scientist. 
Huh? Or uh, That's delineator. That's <laughs> I would just look it up. I'm not sure. Okay, can, Steve, we, we do. can you, you think you can you can email me what she said about the the, the, the person I have to hire? Because probably when they, I, I barely can remember what you said. About yeah, what you yeah. Why don't you, you give can, Steve a call tomorrow and he can um, walk you through it. Yeah, sure. But no activity. On, on the right, yeah, yeah, the right side, like your, the, right the side, previous yeah. owner sure. told you. Sure. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Board, do we have any other questions? No. 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 Thank, thank you very much for thank coming in. Thank you guys in. very much. You're very welcome to come anytime. Mm -hmm. Take you. care. You too. You see Katie Grace on there? Tracy, Katie Deadly has joined the meeting. Oh, thank you so much. Good evening. Yeah. Is Attorney Winner here? But there's something hidden at the bottom. Okay. All right. 7 p.m. public meeting continued. 741. Request for determination of applicability 77 Diva Street. Road work upgrades. Someone here to speak on this project? Steve? No, I um, he's not here. Um, I'm not sure if they've staked it. Um, maybe because of cold weather, but. Okay. Me, Did we me, uh, get every. I can try to get some if you want to hold off. I can email him, see if he can get some answers what he wants to do. Uh, okay. Well, we haven't seen the stakes yet because it hasn't been staked, so. Um, I suppose we just continue, Or Anybody have any objections to that? Good afternoon. Uh, are you guys talking uh, about the BWC White River? I'm sorry, we're on 77 Davis Street, the request for determination of applicability. Oh, my apologies. That's okay. So, I think we just request to have Bob let us know when it's staked for us to go at our leisure. Right? So just a heads up, yeah. This is just off the road. It sounds reasonable. Okay, thank you. Uh, and let's put it on for March 6th. I'll entertain a motion to continue 77 Davis Street. March 6th, 7 p.m. So moved. Okay, motion made. Second, Second by Eric. All those in favor? Uh, Eric Harris, aye. Mike Greco, aye. Mark Monjam, aye. KG Dudley, aye. Okay, thank you. Um, 7 p.m. Public hearing continue notice of intent, Shore Road, lot 299, parcel 7.16. So we have in our packet a request for a continuance. For at least five to six months. And they are going to re-notify and re-advertise once we have that date. Instead of closing it out and refiling. So I think we had discussed this on the time frame and how much time has gone on. Steve, what was your suggestion in June? Meeting in June? Well, we have, we have June 5th, June 26th, July 17th, August 7th in that time frame. June 5th? June 5th, June 26th, July 17th. Okay. Board, uh, what's our thoughts on this continuing that far out? Shouldn't we close this? I don't know. Close is the right word, but. Yeah, it would be close out and re, yeah. refile. The only thing is, 
there's nothing that the public has missed on the application. So it's essentially just holding the place of that DEP number with the comments already made and it would be essentially if they're re-advertising, re-notifying, the abutters are going to be the up-to-date abutters and there's really no uh, substantial discussion that was made on this project. I don't even think there was a, a presentation. Maybe there was a presentation, but I couldn't I don't remember. I couldn't remember that what was even it about. Uh, so I think that it's okay in this situation that the butters that would be concerned didn't miss anything. Mm -hmm. It's more the lingering. Yeah, I'm just I'm still lost as to whether we're what we're doing, whether we're gonna, whether we continue it. Yeah, continue it and to continue it four months. Yeah, minutes, but then but ask them to re-publicize it at that point. Mm -hmm. And they so, keep the same um, DP number. Mm -hmm. Get a certified abutters list, re-notify, re-advertised for the date, which I would have them re-advertise for the June fifth date. Is that far enough out? They said, what, four to five months or five to six months? Yeah, five to six months. Six I think months. we should have an idea of the culvert issue being resolved by then, because that's what they're claiming so. as the issue. That's what they're claiming as right. the reason why they want to extend. Katie Grace? Yeah, I have no issue with that. I mean, they're essentially just saving the, them the cost of refiling, right? Yes. And letting them keep a DEP number. Yes. I don't see that it's an issue as long as they're not doing any work during that time frame. Right. There's no work in our jurisdictional area that is allowed. Okay, and it's under three years. So, yeah, I think they're fine. Okay. Mike? Do you want me to get you a copy of the regulations that talks about being able to do this? If you want to. Yeah. Yeah. I think reasonable time. Okay. Steve's pulling it for us. Katie Grace, if you want to review the meeting minutes from October 17th and November 7th, that would be appreciated. We might have some time before our attorney winner isn't due until about 8 o'clock. Yeah, and, and item number four, I think uh, Oak Street sure. also discussed it. Oh. Did I miss that? Oh, yeah, at when Attorney Winter is here. Correct? No, this is different. Oak Street is uh, the oh. solar farm. It's different than White's Reservoir oh. State. <laughs> you know, oh, my White apologies. Okay. Yeah. Were you getting that rag for continuance? What's that? Were you getting the regulation that um, for the continuance? Yeah. yeah, just let me give me a couple minutes. Okay. All right. So we'll just um, pause on this public hearing for Sure Road Lot 299, parcel 7.16. Table that to um, 755. And here, entertain a motion for that. So moved. Made by Second. Mark. Seconded by Mike. All those in favor? Chair Karen, <clears throat> Mark 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 Katie Dudley, aye. Okay. Project update, BWC White and Reservoir, 45 Oak Street. 
Who would like to start this off? Name and address, please. Oak Street. Art? Art Allen. You with here, us? Representing the commission. Okay, wonderful. Art, Art Allen from Ecotech on the project monitor for the commission. Um, how you how you all doing tonight? Good. How are you? Good. Haven't spoken to you folks in a while. I know. Um, yeah. So uh, we had the uh, sidewalks. Um, to inspect the erosion controls on January 27th. Uh, it was after a week or so of heavy rain in January. Uh, there was one issue with, uh, with the sill fences not being properly secured. And then uh, there had also been some runoff uh, after they installed the, the sill fence and bales and it caused some damage in a couple of spots and it also uh, raised concerns for the down gradient of butter. Uh, Mrs. Kroll on the Sutton side, she's at uh, uh, 78 Tory Road in Sutton. So the site discharged some runoff and um, what I understand are new locations onto her wooded property where she has some trails. So. Um, we I, we met with her during the site walk, discussed her concerns on January 27th, uh, and then on January 30th, I went back to the site, um, uh, observed that the sill fences have been properly secured and reinforced in the areas where they've been compromised by runoff. Um, there were also some discussions about uh, adjustments to the stormwater discharge uh, proposed to uh, basically avoid causing uh, future damage to Mrs. Kroll's property. Um, I believe the project engineer is looking into that and at some point we'll have an update for the commission before they, they actually build those basins. But at this point, uh, you know, all the siltation fencing has been put in per plan. It's actually been reinforced, again, following those rain events. And uh, the only outstanding issue as of my January 30th inspection was they need to post the DEP and NIPTES file numbers. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, they're basically ready to start out there. So that's uh, that's basically my update, and that's summarized in my first site inspection memo that I submitted to the commission dated January 30th. If there's any questions, uh, I'd be glad to answer. Has the abutter's property been restored? Any erosion that and sediment that was over there, has it been restored? I don't believe there's been any substantial damage yet. Um, you know, basically you could see some some leaf displacement where uh, you know where the water had flowed onto her property and across her trails. I I think she's more concerned about the long term, particularly um, you know the discharge from the stormwater basins you know, being concentrated in those areas and causing additional damage. So at, at this point, my understanding is she hasn't, she's not looking for any, you know, kind of repairs on her property, um, but she's more concerned about, you know, down the road and the, the functioning of the stormwater system. Okay, and has the owner been notified of those ruts in the um, permission in the tractor situation. Is anyone here or do you know Art? Oh yeah, no, I haven't, sorry, I didn't mention that. Yeah, I, when I went back on the 30th, um, the site access road had been heavily uh, rutted by uh, what I understand is a, a neighbor's tractor operating on the property going in in advance of the the clearing for the solar and, and removing trees 
And again, this is all just secondhand, but I understand that was with permission of the, the owner of 45 Oak. Um, and the, uh, you know, that was communicated to the solar people and they were going to speak with the property owner and, and, and get that, uh, that work to stop. I mean, it hasn't caused any, you know, any wetland impacts at this point, but, but basically they, you know, they're, that kind of uncontrolled operation on the site, I just recommended that be stopped and, until, you know, the, the actual contractor is in there and can, can stabilize the roads and get things under control. So I, I have not had any feedback from, from anybody since I sent my report other than just, you know, acknowledgement from the, the solar folks that they would speak to the property owner. Okay, thank you. Is anyone here from Douglas Solar? Oak Street Solar? Not so, um, my name is Andrew Socorro. I'm from Mill Creek Renewables. I'm going to be the project manager uh, performing the construction of this site. Um, the commission is uh, totally. Uh, I'm with the commissioner, so we never have approved anything until we have all the permits done. Uh, so this, this uh, we make this stop, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and we communicate with the landowner. Okay. Um, right now we're waiting to see, if possible, uh, get the blessing from the town of uh, Douglas uh, to start cutting trees before the endangered species comes back. Uh, our plan is to, to have all the trees cut uh, if we have the blessing for the town by the end of February. You don't have a blessing for the town? And so once that we have all the permits clear. processed oh. and approved by the town, obviously that's where everything else we kicked out the construction. As long as it complies with the construction, construction sequence plan. Okay. I know uh, it's got a copy of that too. Yeah. Do you comply with the construction sequence plan that's approved by in the order did you do everything including the DEP sign so we have the NOI approval which means all the, the stormwater approvals we have that permit uh, approved already and for that reason we push to expedite the uh, set of the erosion controls uh, trying to get uh, at least the blessing not to stop or grow just to cut the trees uh, before the bad season is back. Um, are, do you know about where they are on this, the list, the construction sequence? Um, as far <laughs> as I'm concerned, everything but the DEP and NIPTI's uh, file number signs, uh, that would be the only outstanding issue uh, in order for them to basically they just need to get their construction stabilized construction entrance and and lay down area in off the street so they can you know have a controlled entrance and get the equipment off the road so once they post the number sign as far as i'm concerned they can start clearing okay okay And then we have in our packet um, a proposal. Yeah. Steve, are you I'll back? Put, I'm, I'm putting out the construction sequence plan. If you, if you just give me a second, I'll bring it right down. Okay. So Art, your first scope of work was just a, an initial inspection that we approved? Or, I'm not sure, so did we approve the third party monitoring? Or what was the first inspection? Is that included in this proposal? That's, that's part of my overall scope of work, yes. But the first document, the site inspection memo. Um, so this we already had that approved, right, as a proposal. 
Yeah, so this was stuff talked about pretty extent, pretty essentially during the public hearing. So do we already approve this work? The scope of work that he's actually completed? What's that? The scope of work. What's the one? Yeah. This is his first inspection report. What is it, this? This is what you're approving. Yeah. That's his proposal. That's and the his applicant's going to pay for this? Yep. Okay. And you signed, you signed it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then you want a vote? Because we didn't have the last meeting. Yeah, you want to vote on it? What? A vote. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Sorry, Art. Okay. Yeah, the last meeting was canceled due to a bleacher, and that's the reason why it never happened. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Yep, I'm just getting refreshed. Okay, board, uh, we have the proposal that I'll just need a vote on, and the applicant is paying. So, um, I'll t entertain a motion. Uh, Katie Grace, do you have any questions or comments? On Oak Street, no. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve the third party environmental monitoring for Echo Tech. So moved. Motion made by Mike. Second. Second by Eric. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Rocco, aye. Mark Mongem, aye. Katie Dudley, aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, so as long as you have, um, you're following your construction sequencing, I don't see why you can't move to the next step of the project. Okay. And I appreciate it, ma'am, and to the Douglas uh, town. Thank you. Okay, back to the continuance. Public hearings by Thank conservation. You. Hello? Oh, have a good night. Hello, everybody. Have a good night. Okay, thank you. Good night. You also. Okay, board, are you ready to continue Shore Road 2997.162? So I've tabled it, so we're going to reopen it. 803. Yep. So moved. Okay, <laughs> motion made by Mark. Second. Second by Eric. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Rocco, aye. Mark Mongem, aye. Katie Dudley, aye. And that would be a continuance date of June 5th with a re advertisement and re notification and new certified abutters list. Okay. Is Attorney Winner here with us? I didn't see his name over here. Okay. Um, Steve? We, yeah. You. You, have you heard from him at all, Attorney Winner? Let me check my email. I will tell you he's not here because I can yeah, scroll through wrap, the uh, Zoom list but I don't see him. Thank you. He's, uh, he's wrapping up. He should be joined shortly. And that was at uh, 758. Okay. Let's get back to the meeting minutes since we have a couple moments. Yeah, which ones did you ask me to look at? Because I found 11.7. Yep, in October, uh, October 17th. to 11-7. Okay. Me neither. Can I get a motion? Well, 
So I'll make a motion then mm -hmm. to approve the meeting minutes as written for November 7, 2022. Thank you. Motion made. Seconded. Second. In. Second. By Eric. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Mike Grucco, aye. Mark Monjum, aye. Katie Dudley, aye. Tracy Sharkey, abstain. And October 17th. Paragraph or item three, hydraulic acidity of a 12 inch culvert. I think it's activity. Number four, 30 feet closer to the building. Entertain a motion to approve as amended. So, motion made by Eric. Second. Signed by Mike. All those in favor? Eric Harris, aye. Eric Rucko, aye. Abstain. Mark Mondrum, abstain. Katie Dudley, aye. Okay, thank you. Some orders to no, sign. I still right out here. Yep, they're right here.
that should be closed. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Could you see if he's going to be longer than 10 minutes? Because I can recess and come back. Okay. okay. He said it might be more than 10 minutes. Come on. Okay, um, I'll entertain a motion to table for 15 minutes. And if he's not available, then we'll have to uh, continue. 
his items. Is that uh, want to just make it 8.30? Yep, I'll entertain a motion to, t to suspend until 8.30. So moved. Motion, made, moved. Um, motion made by Mike. On a second, Katie Grace. Yep. Second. All those in favor. Mayor Carrotsay. Mike Rocco, aye. Mark Munjum, So I have joy. Katie Dudley, aye. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>
uh, proposed agreement, and I revisited it um, prior to tonight's meeting um, to see if it was still consistent with where we were at, uh, any of the new information. I did not make any substantial changes, although I updated it. Uh, so for proper references and dates and things like that. Um, and so I, I forwarded that again today, um, but it isn't new. It's something that you've already seen. Um, it's just a, a little bit updated in light of the circumstances. Um, but I think at this point, um, uh, and if I understand um, the applicant's counsel's response to me sharing that again with him today, uh, that they're on board with that. So I think we're all on the same page to uh, finalize that memorandum of understanding and have the applicant order purchase and then install pipe subject to all the conditions and restrictions and caveats in this agreement. And I'm happy to go through that in detail if you'd like. If you had any questions on any of those terms or, or conditions that I put in there, what they mean or why I added them, um, I'm happy to address those things but I think it is now finally teed up for your discussion and your consideration um, and if you see fit to your vote tonight okay thank you very much so board I'll open it up for comments first Katie Grace did you have a chance to review the memorandum um, I didn't, but I will look at it now. But just as a, a, a first question, are we just talking regarding the culvert? We're not talking to the RDA regarding um, any of the addresses at Shore Road? The RDA? Oh, Madam Chair, if I... Yep. Go ahead, okay. attorney. Go ahead, attorney winner. I'm sorry, it's just the difficulty being on the phone versus being able to see you. My apologies, yep. but um, yes, I just wanted to talk about the culvert and only the culvert in a vacuum. Okay, thank you. Understood, thank you. Steve, any comments? Um, just that, Brian Warner might not know it, that the peer review consultant, Jeff Walsh, is in independence. Thank you. So if no one has any questions on the agreement, I'm happy to just walk you through it, but um, a couple things I could highlight for you. One is just to make sure that um, the work was done pursuant to an approval from the commission and under the supervision and direction of the commission as well as um, the applicant's uh, consultant. Obviously, if we're going to do this, we should do this right and it should be, um, it should be witnessed, it should be monitored, and we should have a report that, it, in fact, it was um, the correct pipe that went in and it was installed properly. Um, that the depth and elevations and the inlet and outlet and all that was done correctly, so that is in here. Um, there's also language to um, require that the as built plan be updated to show the correct diameter of the pipe at its location. Um, so that is in here. Um, the uh, property owner um, across um, Shore Road um, is, has already indicated that they will sign off on this, as they always have. So their permission is embedded in here. Um, um, highway and police um, are going to need to be contacted just to make sure that all the public safety elements are addressed uh, when this work commences. Um, they'll have to comply, of course, with any, any directions, instructions, or orders that the commission uh, sees fit to give when they apply for and obtain. Uh, a permit to do this. And then lastly, and this is very important, uh, it's the last paragraph, paragraph eight. Um, this is not to waive any of our authority, jurisdiction, um, anything about anything else, other than just we agree that the pipe can be installed um, to resolve this, this very limited issue. But as to any other 
uh, pending applications, any future applications, any applications with respect to other properties, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is not going to be binding on the commission, and you will still have all the jurisdiction that you have under state law and town bylaws, and that this is not going to affect any of that. Um, so with respect to any permitting rights you may have, any rights to review projects, any right, uh, rights to review changes in projects, and any enforcement authority that you may have, you retain all of those. So I want to make sure that this is uh, uh, very surgically tailored to just this task and nothing else. Okay, thank you. And how would you like us to fashion our motion? Uh, if the commission is so willing to take it up at this point, I would say that um, it would be a motion to endorse the memorandum of agreement as prepared by Attorney Winner, just to make sure we have the right version. Mm -hmm. And the file stamp is 2623 to make sure you're approving the correct version and sign off on the correct version. Okay. Katie Grace. Board, any comments? I'm fine with it. Okay. Thank you for the comment. Katie Grace, anything? Comments, questions? No, I'm I'm all set with that memorandum. Okay. Mike. Mike. entertain a motion to endorse the memorandum as prepared by attorney winner version 2623. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Mark. Second. Second by Mike. All those in favor? <coughs> Mike Greco, aye. Mark Mungem, aye. KG Dudley, aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Do we, do we still want, is Jeff Walsh still here? Do you still want to stay with us? I would be glad to, Madam Chair, okay. just in case any questions come up. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. So Attorney Winner, the next item is the request for a certificate of compliance, 115 Shore Road. Okay, thank you. And on this matter, I understand that you now have um, a proper application in front of you along with uh, an as built plan. Um, I imagine you'll want to hear from the applicant to present that. Uh, we have sort of discussed uh, a few issues in um, with regard to this submission. Um, and uh, I don't want to be their messenger or be their advocate, so I think it's more appropriate for them to make their case as to what's shown on the plan and why it uh, deserves approval. Um, and then uh, I think it'd be better if I responded to their presentation rather than got out ahead of it. Um, but uh, if you're inclined to do that, uh, I will probably have some follow-up comments um, once, once you've uh, heard from them as to what they're looking for you to approve. Okay, thank you, I agree. Who is going to present the request for our certificate of compliance? I might say. I think Attorney Potash is talking, but okay. he's muted. Um, might You're be. You're muted. Can he? He can't see you. Could you? Tell him. Yeah. No, there's no way to tell him. Yeah, thank you. She's un unmuting him. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, good evening, Howard Potash. I represent the Millers. 
and I believe the engineer is on Zoom also, and Mr. Kowarski should be present uh, at your meeting. And uh, there was a site review, I think, a couple of weeks ago on a Saturday morning that we all attended, and uh, and uh, and uh, I, the, the uh, outside work of the house is all uh, completed. Uh, there was a couple, uh, and the engineer has uh, issued a letter of complete compliance. Uh, there was a couple uh, minor uh, changes that occurred uh, that uh, we uh, reviewed, uh, and I believe uh, we, we're, it's appropriate for uh, for the site plan uh, to uh, uh, to be approved. Uh, and uh, I think the only issue that came up uh, was. Uh, uh, small amount of uh, a member who attended suggested, and I think Mr. Ziss uh, uh, suggested that there be a little more growth uh, uh, installed in the back. Um, uh, and uh, and uh, Mr. Kowarski is uh, quite willing uh, 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 to take care of that. He can uh, describe what he, he would do to put in a few more plants. Um, and uh, and uh, but uh, and and the ground is still able to do that because we haven't had uh, much uh, cold weather. So we believe that the um, uh, the uh, the matter is ripe uh, for a vote. We request a vote tonight that the as-built plan, as slightly changed, which is not anything of any substance, um, that. Uh, that be approved, uh, be, by, be approved uh, by the uh, commission, and that my clients have done everything uh, in a very uh, good and working-like manner. They've uh, been very meticulous uh, about uh, about uh, about building this house and, uh, and have not cut any corners or done anything uh, at all that's uh, that's not uh, not not uh, uh, not, a, not appropriate and. Um, and uh, so uh, uh, we would respectfully ask the commission, uh, this has been going on for a while, uh, we would respectfully ask the commission to vote tonight and approve the uh, as-built plan. And, uh, and we expect, um, uh, we expect us uh, to, uh, 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 now that the commission has approved uh, the pipe replacement, we expect to order the pipe and weather permitting, um, and do the work as soon as uh, as soon as, as soon as uh, possible with an excavator that we've already hired, who's very experienced uh, in replacing um, replacing pipes. So I don't think I, there's more that I can add. But um, um, uh, uh, I did not. I did not. I stayed in the front of the house uh, because I was afraid of falling with some snow there. Uh, due to health reasons, but I think everyone else and Mr. Kowarski uh, was there uh, with the engineer and they went all around uh, uh, the house and uh, uh, I didn't hear any uh, comments except that we should add a little bit of, uh, of plant growth in the back, which is uh, quite quite agreeable to do. Thank you very much. Thank and you. I would ask Mr. Kowarski if he wants to add anything uh, since he's there. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. If I could. Yes. Sh should I be heard or could you hear me by? Um, you can come over at the seat right there. I, thank you. Glenn Kowalski for me beat the environmental. I would just ask that the member who saw the plants in the back, if that becomes one of the issues left, because they were very small, uh, witch hazel, uh, and they were in a cluster. <coughs> And on the plan, they do show 11 foot spacing. It didn't specify from the original uh, plan with pr prior to Raul uh, what size they would be. It just was replacement of bushes. And we understand if it says replacement, if it's replacement. We had suggested to the clients, and I talked to them again tonight and this afternoon, that we do have witch hazel, which is three feet tall, and two and a half foot high bush blueberry, and two and a half foot winterberry, which uh, are all suitable for this backyard area. They will grow in 
these conditions. The fact up would be the winter berry, but the other two are fact wet. But one third of the time they grow in the upland is what the rating of fact wet is. And uh, EPA back in the 70s called Highbush Blueberry E, which which meant the same as grows well as the upland is as well. As we all know, they can, you can find them both. And winterberry, when it's planted, it's actually used as a landscaping feature in some yards. So once it's planted, it's just normally the seed needs more moisture to germinate, but the plant itself grows fine in those situations. So we could substitute a few small, when I say small, five to seven, maybe seven inch high witch hazel with, a, with more substantial bushes, possibly in the spacing that shows on the plan, possibly put a bond up for those plants to guarantee that we watch them for a couple years to ensure that they do grow and um, and report back on them. But still potentially receive a certificate for the remaining work. I believe we demonstrated during the site inspection, or Raul did to the gentleman here, that we weren't shedding water onto the neighbor and that the uh, walls and walkways and septic were all, which the septic has been approved by the Fort Hill, were all stabilized, nothing that would affect the resource area and nothing that we see is shedding onto the abutting neighbor to the south. But I would defer to the member that was at the site inspection. I know he said that he was going to have some comment on the plans. Yeah, let's get back to the plans because the as-built plan actually shows three pretty large well, it, trees. But, but They're all good, but it doesn't. Yeah. It really doesn't specify any height or location is specified. The lo location is uh, uh, they're eleven, but they don't look. They look that way in the field. No, no, in this, they're in all this, in one spot. In one. It, this is it, right? One this, little yeah, cluster about this big. Okay. Has all three. And uh, these are actually we scaled them. They're eleven feet apart on the on the. Uh, on okay. The yeah, and I'm sure that that was discussed on the type and size and the hearing process. Possibly. Right. So I could but, look at the many. But all minutes. I can see through, yeah. the, you, yeah. through the chairwoman is their spacing and the general location. The right. applicant's wife did state that it's very rocky out there, but we know that we can move around and work around rocks. I mean, we auger between rocks. We dig around mm -hmm. even larger rocks. So we could find spacing if it is rocks under the lawn. Right. A heavy or, or um, substantial that we could still possibly find a hole that we could plant these. And they are yeah. wild plants that can take to within rock systems. And, Okay. As long as we put those Did you want to say one thing? Name and address. One comment Tiffany, to the to the plants. Diane and uh, Robert Miller's daughter. I just uh -huh. wanted to say that there is tons of rocks there because I'm trying to put in a dog fence, underground dog fence, yeah. and I've hit every rock imaginable on that property. Okay. That's all I'm okay. Say. Right. okay. Back to the chairwoman again. But we we would hope that with the substantial bushes that we propose to plant that the, um, again, we did talk about bond with the client that might make it palatable for the commission to issue a certificate but have a condition that, okay. condition that these plants are monitored for two okay. years. All right. Um, Mark, did you want to speak on the plantings? Yeah, I mean, what he said is correct. It, it's really just twigs there. Yeah. Very small, all within one small grouping. And mm -hmm. um, I don't think that was the intent. Mm -hmm. of, uh, of the approval. So I think that that should be, um, you know, it should be more plants if those ones are to stay. Maybe that represents one plant and we need a couple more, I would say, there to uh, duplicate, more duplicate what was shown on the plant. Sure. Yeah, because there's a blue spruce removed and right. I think that had something to do with it. Maybe. There was a discussion on that tree being removed. Yeah. That's why Seth and Joy had these on his original. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. More okay. Okay. And then the the change that was made in the field with the wall. So let's go over the wall and the the rock the Yes, the, um, uh, the uh, proposed plan showed grading on the south side of the house. Um, it showed a fill there at the um, bottom of the um, septic system and a slope to the property line. Um, 
they've actually improved that situation, I think, by raising and by creating a wall at the mm -hmm. property line. Mm -hmm. And therefore, by building a wall, they're able to kick the water back towards their own house and towards the, the reservoir. Mm -hmm. So it, ha it has, it's uh, less impactful on the neighbor than it would have been if it was done in accordance with the plan. Yeah, I'm not sure how, there. not even with a swale. So when we're looking at those as build grades, it's not necessarily into the next door neighbor's property. It's did we request those grades to be extended? You know, the, the, the red as, as built. built. Yeah. No, we didn't. So that there was no activity on that side as well. Correct. My there point should be is, no change over yeah, it on should that have, side. Okay. And so we really did not need the um, proposed or the as built grading for that okay. area. Okay. Um, the other thing that I did look at that I didn't make comment in our walkthrough, but that um, I did comment to uh, Mr. Zisk about afterwards was um, the original plan shows the road, shore road to a, have a crown on it. Mm -hmm. And, and Asbilt also shows that the road is crowned. Mm -hmm. But it does not appear that that is the case when you're out in the field. It appears that the the ground pitches from the septic from the from the little parking area on the north side of the house into the road and then down the road and across the road. Um, not not and so the original condition was it looked like water came off of the road and down by the house, alongside the house, and mm -hmm. towards the, 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 the lake. Mm -hmm. And that no longer occurs. It's um, flat. It was built up. The little driveway area was built up and raised. And so it's kicking the water back into the road in that area there. So that's, that. I think the, the top of the septic area is, is at the proposed elevation. Mm -hmm. That seems correct to me. Mm -hmm. But that area there where the uh, driveway comes in, that appears to have been raised and kicking the water back towards the road. And I don't think that is the original condition or what was proposed. You don't think the original condition in the road, the 101? What is existing? So it's been I, altered? I can't speak for the road, but yeah. I think the road has been altered. Yeah. Okay. It seems like it. Because I think we had asked for a spot grade at the edge of the roadway, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I right? mean, at I'm the edge at of the, the property line. The as built, if you look at it, I mean, there's a 101 elevation. Mm -hmm. And it, that's. Um, it runs through the edge of the traveled way. Mm -hmm. And then there's a 100 elevation like off the corner of the house mm -hmm. which would make you believe that the water comes from the 101 to the 100 there but it doesn't it's there's a higher point okay. in between those two points that's that's going back towards the um, the roadway there okay and that concerned me because that means that we're taking more water down the street towards um, you know where it's coming off the road is at the next property basically okay Okay. Could, could, yes. Could we say that when we did walk, or I walked, I thought we all walked down to the, the next location in front of the other house where there's another pooling area on the east side, excuse Here me, is. on the east side of the house, excuse me, again on, yes, the east side of the house, east side of the house, where, on the east side of the road where water discharges into a pooling area down the road. We saw a little erosion gully there where road water was running off. I had noted that a few months ago or in the late summer right. that it was running in that direction which it appears to be running in that direction now. I, I wouldn't say that it's running into the uh, neighbor's yard but I would also defer to Raul who's the one who shot that 101 and ask him what he's what he did mm -hmm. to, to come up with that because mm. he is on the line. Okay, let's, Evening, everyone. let's do that. Evening, everyone. This is Raul Makais, for Make Engineering. Yep. Uh, if you guys look at the plan, you look at above the septic system and above the tank, it's like one, one and a half. 
uh, at the driveway area is also almost at the same elevation. So the septic when it was raised, yes, some runoff is going towards the street and that goes on the approved plan. Um, it does go across to the wetland and through the pipe and back to the lake again. So it does, yes, go across the street. And that's already shown on the plan. So there is no crown in the road? There is an area with a crown in the road right above the pipe. And I know when the, uh, the pipe was replaced from a 12 inch to an 8 inch, this area might change a little bit, but uh, okay. at the property when we did the survey, that's the crown right now. That's the area that is a crown, yes. But so, there is also a higher area above the septic. If you look at the spot elevation above the septic, you can see that. Referring to the tank. We have one, right. one point four, one one point three. So are you saying that you did not shoot the grades after that pipe was replaced with the eight inch pipe in the roadway? No. Not across the street, but I we did it on the our property. The edge of and up to the property. The edge of the property. On our property. Did I um, request a spot grade at the front, the frontage? I thought we had discussed um, some grades that we had requested to be shown on the plan on the first revision of the as built. Yeah, that was for grading uh, on the property to show where is the runoff coming from going from the property and that's already shown on the plan. Okay. Yes. Thank you to the chairwoman. Could, um, in the road issue with runoff, if we can show during our as built with the pipe as being a separate project, project the roadway, that our finesse, and I'll use that term, grading, will we'll show that we're grading so that water is shedding off to the water, to the inlet of the pipe wetland system. If that satisfies the commission that we're not sending it down the road, we, we can do that, again, finesse grading, so that water's coming down the road from a uh, northern direction and sheds off into our pooling area where we're putting the new pipe if that helps to satisfy, or, or we can crown the road. If the commission's concerned that we're not taking enough water off the road and coming into the lot, is that what the concern is, that it was used to come into the lot well before I Yes, it was yeah. crowned, and now it's flat and heading down the street with velocity. Volume and velocity yeah. relates as you yeah. gain length. Sure. And, I, and it's probably eroded also. It's washed too, over the couple of years, too. I was wondering if when if the when the 8-inch pipe is repa replaced by the 12-inch pipe, yes, if, if that grade at the entrance to the driveway can be, could be lowered a, a smidge to be able to take some water off. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, mm -hmm. I would say that if that's the solution, we are going to be there. We are going to be working with the transit. Can work with Raul too because I'm my engineer, my uh, contract will, will be shooting grades for invert elevations as I stated in my letter. My, my letter was just for clarity, it wasn't I'm okay. sorry for that. But we probably didn't need it, but I okay. thought the commission would start saying, Well, how are you going to do it? And I didn't want to leave it that we're just through um, our devices, so I figured I'd add that we are going to follow the standard procedure. So okay. I could, let me just visually verbally yeah. say that and yes. forget my letter. So perfect. Thank you. Okay, so yeah. we'll be using transits and um, and in, um, grading and offsets. But that being said, that this roadway, if the roadway with the pipe can be its own issue, we can address that uh, during our work in the roadway. And if it wasn't satisfied to the commission, well, I guess, well, as the as the attorney stated. You still have all the rights of uh, enforcement, and of course, mm -hmm. we're not going to look for that. We're going to do it the way that you all want it. Mm. Right. Okay. Uh, Katie Grace, do you have any questions or comments? No, I was just I was listening closely to, to Mark because I didn't make the site log, but I appreciate um, the team's uh, observations who did make it. And I also had concerns about the grading on the site, washing out to the street. And I was concerned because you were talking about potentially the grading allowing the water to run off across the street, then enter the culvert so that it could come back and drain into the lake. 
that seems like a very roundabout way uh, to manage um, rainwater and stormwater. Uh, so I would encourage, and, and to your point, Tracy, as well, I, you know, I, we don't want to see the water running down the street either. Um, so I think that we need to make sure the grading is such a way that it doesn't need to go across the street to come back and underneath. It, it shouldn't leave the property um, and go on to another property in order to eventually drain into the lake. Mm. Right. I think it's a tricky, tricky situation because something has changed. The historical flow has absolutely changed. So I think we're just trying to hypothesize what exactly happened. But visually, with your naked eye, Mark is saying it's flat as a pancake, right? I think the road pitches to the south, wouldn't you say? For the most part, the water is traveling down to the, to the south. It definitely depression. comes down and goes across into the but into the other side. When I was there in the summer through the chairwoman, that it was, mm -hmm. I, that's where my flow was going before. I, there's a slight crown on the road, right at the edge of the road, and it doesn't allow our road, the road water coming from north to south to actually dump into, okay. which I, at one point it would have gone into what the wetland that we have across the street, and now most of it bypasses, and when I was there in the summer, I took photos of it. It was bypassing then, too. Yeah, it must have been graded and built up the on the sides. It's just graded I mean, in the yeah. sand and over the years. Yeah. Town Highway Department could come by with a grader and, and change things again, yeah. right? We, right. We really don't that's know. the... There's no permanent. That's a con there. Yeah, yeah, that's the, the concern. Route. One thing we could say is that if we have, if Raul has grades within the road and it works with his septic system, we could just match what was there prior to work, period. At least we could do that. Well, we're saying, it, he's saying that it matches. Well, well, if you look yeah. at uh, sorry, if you look at the uh, approved plan, the original plan for the design, you will see the crown is almost closer to the Miller's property, not in the middle of the road. So basically, even the old plan, the 214 plan, most of the road is sloped toward the abutting property across the street, not toward the Miller's property. So we didn't change one. Through the chair. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, this is a gravel road. I mean, over the years, yeah. things will yeah. change. That's we where, yeah, that's what we're struggling with. It's not permanent. I would, through the chair, that I, I would say that we could match what grades were there prior to our work. We, that is a pot possibility. And I would say that we would propose to do that. And we would have to have Raul there. So in our final grading with our, our uh, excavator, with our actual bulldozer, how we're grading the road, we just have shot spot grades going down it and just match what had originally been there. And if that satisfies the commission, I guess we're back to where we were before. And mm -hmm. I would still say that some water should go into our well because it, it's clearly a, a small edge that forces it to go further south. And it's very small, right? but it, but it is bypassing that well. So if we crowd it and remove that small edge, some water would go into our wetland system, some would go further down the road, but all down the road would not receive it. And that's what I saw in the summer. And I would I would just request that you, we take a look at, you take a look at the actual, that little parking area there yes, on sir. the north side and, and how it comes up and then it uh, falls I, off to the out. And if that, if that where it crown comes up, that could be graded I, so that it, some water goes that towards the lake. And I did note that newer material that he used, which is that crushed stone that probably a half inch. Uh, so you could see the difference between the clay, you know, more silty soil of the road makeup and this newer material that was put there uh, more recently. So I, we could see, I, I did see that it was raised a bit from my yeah. eye. But again, if we go by original grades and make sure some water sheds off into the wetland as, as historically it appeared it would have, I mean, it doesn't make sense that all the water would be bypassing the wetland on, on the, across the street from us. Why or, would you? or bypassing 115 and continuing down Well, we, on we that want to side. receive then the on same the amount of water side. that we received before. I know the clients don't want any more water than received before, but we, we would accept easily the amount of water that was there pre our work. Because that would only be logical that we receive out the water that we yeah, always receive. If that's easily proven, I don't know. 
But right. all we can do is go um, by the historic elevations that the surveyor shot and then go back to them. Right, right. Okay. Keep in mind that the northing, the northing driveway area outside the property, this pipe would be replaced in this area and then it would be recreated to match the original grade. Right, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Exactly, that's what we. I was thinking is yeah. it's something that could yeah, be done easy. when that pipe is reinstalled. I, I, would, I would offer so, that. Yeah, we, we, we can take care of that, that's easy. Okay. It's finesse grading, meaning very small grade changes. Yeah. Eric, anything? Mike? Attorney Winner. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, for recognizing me. Uh, I think those were a lot of excellent comments, and I'm sort of reminded that part of this exercise was to get back to a baseline that we could all agree upon uh, and essentially have a fresh start here. So if we uh, are able to implement all the things you talked about and those get ultimately reflected on an as-built plan, you will now have uh, something on your file that shows uh, a new baseline condition that we've vetted and approved and had peer-reviewed, um, and we may uh, finally reach um, a little bit of a comfort level here. So I, I think everything I heard sounded positive, um, and it sounds like there is a solution to it, and we need to implement that and have it shown on on the documents that you have. Uh, so it sounds like we're go going in a good direction. Okay. Steve, do you have any comments? You were at the site walk. I, I agree with, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a lot going on with the last 15 minute conversations and, you know, I, I agree with what Mr. Warner said and, and, and what you're saying. and. Um, you know, it's hard to say with the naked eye. I mean, that's why we got the, the experts and the, the peer review. But um, that sounds like a uh, something that hopefully everyone can agree upon. Thanks. So, Attorney Werner, are you, excuse me? Oh, it's Katie Grace, I, I was gonna. Oh. It's just I wanted to know how we were going to verify that we've matched the original grading, if that's the goal here. Because I agree with the idea that we want to match the previous grading. But do we have, like, a picture that we want to compare to? Do we want to compare, like, are we just going to visually verify that it looks like the original from before the work started? Do we, do we have a plan to verify when we've actually achieved what we think would be the original grading? Could we ask Raul how how much how much grading if I could ask yeah. you how much grading did you shoot in the roadway so that we can match what originally was there? Do you have enough information? I have some from 2014. Uh, I have to look at the CAD file and see what I have. Uh, I can submit it to the commission later on see what I have, but. Uh, I mean, didn't shoot much on the road because our focus during the project approval was only the house and the septic. Yeah. But I can share the information I have with you guys. Okay. And lastly, if I could, but mm -hmm. we understand that some water, I believe, which potentially would shed to the wetland across the street, some sheds to us, some does flow and has been, and there's an obvious erosion gully and delta in the next wetland system down mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, I don't know if it's one or two houses to the south, but across the street. There's an actual delta in there. I have focused okay. it from this summer when I first got involved in the project. Okay. Um, there's, a, there's a comment on the chat. Robert, do you have the uh, latest and greatest as-built plan you can sh share on the screen? That's from this computer I'm using, but I think I emailed it to you, right? We have it on the desk. Yeah, the audience can't see it. We don't have our smart computer going. Right. So. So while Steve is locating that, Attorney Winner, are you advising to hold off on the COC issuance until we get the as-built plan to make sure everything's implemented? Yes, and 
but for the COC, there's nothing else in front of you, and so there's no vehicle <coughs> to get another plant approval in front of you. So rather than uh, do it twice, my recommendation would be to hold off on approval of the COC until you really do a final uh, that reflects everything we've discussed tonight. And then you can wrap it up with a, uh, one last vote on one final plan, and that could potentially be the end of it there. Uh, but if you close it out tonight, you know, prematurely without any of this, there's, there's nothing left. I mean, there's, that's the COC. So issuing a, a partial, um, I don't think would be as satisfying as issuing a final, okay. considering how many moving parts we have. Okay, board. Do we, if I could do add we, something, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, one Madam moment. Chairman. One moment, Attorney okay. Potash. Um, board, are we in agreement with that moving forward? Yep. Mike? Yeah. Mark? Katie Grace? I, I agree with Attorney Winner's recommendation that we should hold off. Okay. Attorney Potash, did you have something else to add? Well, I, I, was, I was just going to uh, suggest, uh, since we've been here many times, that, uh, that the certificate of compliance be issued with the caveat of what we discussed tonight and that that be part of the uh, vote that we're, that we're, since we're doing the pipe work, uh, that we're going to, uh, we're, we're going to, uh, we're going to go, go back to the original grade and provide, uh, uh, provide uh, adequate proof to the commission that, that we're doing that. And, uh, and that's easy to do because we're going to be doing the pipe work shortly, so that's uh, not a problem for us uh, to do that, and that would be agreed to do. And then we wouldn't have to come back, but we'll absolutely agree uh, in in the vote to do to do the work uh, that we agreed to do, and that would be a, that would be a, that would be that would be part of the vote, and and that can be uh, that can be uh, that can be uh, verified uh, verified by the engineer, uh, and and uh, that that is being done. That we don't have a problem. I would recommend to my clients, obviously, and they're on Zoom. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, in Florida, but they don't they don't have a problem with uh, uh, doing that. And it, it's a very uh, small uh, thing to do, and we're there anyway uh, with the pipe installation. We like to wrap up everything uh, at once, and since we're going out with the excavator, it's very easy to uh, uh, to do it. And once it's done, uh, it can it can be checked and verified. I appreciate your opinion, but I believe the commission is going to uh, take the advice of our council uh, on this one. And you said it yourself, it's pretty easy, you're going to get going fast, so you've waited this long. Um, I think it's much cleaner. You have an as-built that will be referenced in the certificate and it'll be closed out. So I appreciate your opinion though, but we, we have to go with our, with advising our advising council board anything else no no i don't have anything forever okay mr Gaborski does okay no i'll um through the board of course chairman uh, we'll uh, do the grading we'll consult with the town at the time to make sure our grading is going to be acceptable to the town we'll right. we'll look at what we have out there we'll have raul there shooting grades while we're finesse grading then he can do the full ass belt of the road and the pipe and present it and then at that point because we're going to consult with you during this process to make sure that we're satisfying you at that grade Okay. Uh, then we can uh, put the ass belt off to bed and get the uh, order certificate of compliance at that point. Okay, thank and you very much. Communication with Mr. Ziss when the when the work is yes, going sir. to yes, happen, sir. and so he yeah. can we'll be working directly with Robert. Somebody yeah. brought it up. Yeah. Trish, <laughs> Trish, you just comment on that. You know, um, one, we just want to make sure that the the work and the stuff that's going to be verified. You know, when he says with the town. You know, is, is how are we gonna certify? How do you want that certification done? Um, when you have a, a a PE out there, or are you gonna want someone with a stamp that's kind of just certified so it goes with with the file? Um, so we're not going down this road again and inadvertently 
something happens that's not kosher. I'm sorry. I believe, yeah, in your memo Surveyor. from today. Yeah, a land surveyor, registered land surveyor will be used on site to verify. To, to verify the, uh, the, the grades that we can verify through Raul's 2000, the 2014 plan from Seth LaJoy. In hearing the discussion here, that some water came towards us, some water did go down the road, and we will look at the original water that would have shed, had shed off into the well across the street from us and balance, what I would say, is that we're going to balance flows in three different directions, mm -hmm. into ours, down to the south, and some and some to us. Mm -hmm. if that satisfies and gets us as close as what we originally had. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hope, well, we're going to be discussing that with Mr. Zisk yeah. at the time, and we're going to shoot the grades. Well, that's, well, that's my, you know, I, I think that should be more of a, you know, a higher up decision than just the conservation agent. Um, because you we'll know, we'll get, you know, the engineering practices, um, um, you know, I, don't, uh, my, I got an idea. Uh, I think the board should come in and, and look at that also. That's, um, to I'm, that's what I'm proposing to do. Is I, don't that I'm gonna... field, I don't want to make an in the field statement when all of a sudden it turns out 80% of it is, is going, you know, or something's not going what was according to plan. There is really no plan at this point, well, so I don't know. If, I'm not a right. stormwater expert. That's what I'm saying. That's why we hired uh, um, the, someone to do the peer review. So I don't okay, know. yeah, we're going to create a plan up front, mm -hmm. showing different flow directions using the pre-existing grades. Mm -hmm. Some water going to the south, some mm -hmm. water coming into us mm -hmm. by by that berm that was made by just plowing, mm -hmm. and then some water shedding to the, the lot. Okay, one fifteen. Okay, we'll present that plan. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to do, and then mm -hmm. that's what we'll implement during the pipe change. Okay. Right. So Sounds I mean, great. That yeah. Be we'll we'll bring the plan to you. Right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. You're Perfect. To the yeah. commission. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Through you. Not yeah. That name, but I mean, don't trace you. Don't you think that should be to the board, and so people could look it, at it? It is to the board. It will be. Any issue? It will be presented to the board. One last thing. We'll come to you informally if it's an informal, because that's, I think, it's the way it's going to yes. be. Yes. We don't have a notice. And then we're going to informally present the plan. We'll, yes. We'll see if y'all, it uh, works for you. We'll work with Raul in these grades, come up with that, just that plan for that area. Mm hmm At the same time, we can have the invert elevation on the pipe. I think mm -hmm. we already have that. We, mm -hmm. That's the only other thing that we're changing. We're not... I know the millers don't want to create a whole new plan, but there's an as-built, and this would just mimic the as-built that's coming along down the road. Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, Appreciate your efforts. What, what is the proposed what is the proposed part grading here? What is the the grading we're trying to achieve? Uh, above the septic, for example, the approved grading is to grade no. toward the street. Yeah, no, the nothing on the septic system. system. The only no, area we is in discussion is the north and driveway. Correct. Is that the only area we need to fix or there are other areas on the property we need to fix? No. Though? Not on property. No. On the road? Yes. Look at this. The north driveway area and a little bit of the road. So the road and the driveway area, the northern driveway area mm -hmm. and the road, but the septic area is going to stay. It's, so it's, it's that's the no. same. There's it's the not going to change at all. But just trying to make sure that I we do it right. Okay. Great. We're happy to meet. Just to, to clear up on that one, yes. we know that we can't change the septic. It has to have a certain cover over yes. the top of it. We're not going to try to change with the board health approved. But I think, as the gentleman is saying here, that some water might have shedded through that driveway area before, which appears might not be shedding into us now. So Correct. we'll look at that. I, I hear what you're saying, and we'll talk to Rob and We'll work the grades. Okay. So Thank we'll you. Shed some onto us. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you again. We appreciate it very much. Okay. Time. Uh, we have one more discussion item, Gene Lawrence, Shore Route, and 115 compliance comments. Uh, just briefly, is Gene available? Are you here? Um, yes, I am. Okay. I'm gonna say goodbye. Okay. Um, we have one member that has to go. Uh, so just briefly, what what is your okay. comment? Okay. 
Well, um, thanks for attention about the road. I just want to comment that um, I think it was Mr. Kaborski was referring to like the wetlands, like the water always flowed down there and said the other wetlands across two houses down, that's not correct. So I just want to correct that. Um, I guess if I know you're in a hurry, um, I wrote a letter with a lot of details, but I guess the top, the top question would be to go to the trouble to replace the, the culvert pipe through the road and not make sure it's matching and functioning throughout the property um, at at least the 12 inch capacity um, you know would kind of be a mistake and I, there were statements made in prior concom meetings I think that the, that, that pipe was replaced and, um, and you know I I think there was a question about whether it's a 12 inch pipe all the way. I know it is at the very beginning and at the end, but in the middle. So I, I think, you know, there it certainly we should have the pipe um, viewed with the camera. And um, and I'm wondering if um, Braves Engineering, because they already, you know, are familiar with the whole situation, whether that would just be possible um, and just to make sure that this culvert replacement will, will be to no avail if, if the rest of that drainage is not operative and that was required on the building permit on the building permit not and under the order of conditions so i think uh you know yeah. when this is getting reattached you could see the size of the pipe that's existing on property so i would say that that would be something for the zoning enforcement officer as i've previously stated in many meetings um attorney winner did you want to add anything to that request um no i don't think so at this point um but we can maybe flag that and keep an eye on it as we go forward here okay and jeff walsh as far as uh the connection to the existing pipe that'll be exposed and we can see the size of that existing pipe, correct? That is correct. Um, that should be exposed. They need to have a good uh, connection to the existing pipe. It's my understanding that the section of pipe that runs between number 15 and the 115 in the abutting property was not replaced. I don't know that for a fact, but that's what I recall being told. Um, my thinking is that one can view visually the area approximate to the connection, you know, view the pipe at the, at the connection only, but if there is concern of the integrity of the pipe from that connection point down to the reservoir, um, there should be some way to make use of that open end of the existing pipe, whether and, and do either a camera, camera type of inspection or, or Quite simply, if it's a straight run of pipe and there's daylight at the other end, you can you can look for what we call a full moon through the pipe without having to use a camera. But the point being is the integrity of the rest of the pipe, down gradient of that that's being replaced in short road, um, should be confirmed to be in good condition. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Jean, does that answer your question? Um. Yes. Um, okay. Yes, I, I think that sounds like they're going to confirm that it's 12 inches all the way down, which just, I was told by someone who helped replace it that they, um, yeah, that it had been replaced and it's not an RCT pipe going down and, and I think probably it's not 12 inches, but I'm not positive about that. Okay. All right. But, but all, of, all of this effort, which we appreciate, um, Will, will not be to avail. I think maybe uh, Mr. Walsh can confirm that if the rest of the pipe isn't 12 inches, then replacing the opening will have the functional effect you're looking for. Uh, I'm not sure he has that within his scope of work. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, well, anyway, I think it's yeah. logical. <laughs> um, um, my brother is an engineer, Greg Bentley. He can comment on that, but. Um, but anyway, so that that is um, a question. And then um, Mr. Frazier had early when he saw that house said this house has to have gutters. I will make sure this house has gutters. Um, and I don't know what's happened with that. But um, 
I would suggest yeah, that you ask uh, Mr. Fraser because I don't know what uh, was I'm... said. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Attorney Winner, did you have anything else to add before we? I'm all set here, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Tracy, I got, I got, and maybe for Attorney Winner too. So, can we, just to recap, clear, just for clarification, the steps going forward. Um, so there's no ambiguity on what is the steps going forward from this point? You want me to list them? Well, it's well. Some I don't know if the attorneys want to put them in, or we need it in writing, or you know, because they're not just going to start up and, and start digging. I mean, are they going to? Did I hear they're going to have a, a a little game plan on how they're going to do the grading and, be, and then come back? Are they are they going to ultimately come back in front of the commission before they start any work? Yes, they're going to submit a proposed finesse grading plan with the grades that were previously there and the changes that they're going to be making before they begin the work. For okay. Mark is going to be the point person for a review of that plan. It's going to be an informal submittal to the planning, um, to the Conservation Commission. And then um, they'll notify of the activities to the Highway Department and everyone that's listed on that. So there will be a plan that will be somewhat like an as-built plan. Um, there will be the invert grade on there and as well as the other proposed grading. Um, can, can we I'm sorry. Photograph some? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I need to wait till Steve answers me. Okay. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, attorney winner, is that your understanding also? It, it is, and there are more steps laid out in the MOU that we discussed, so those are going to dovetail. Okay. That's my understanding also. Um, I'll take one more question. Um, is that Mr. Bentley? I cannot. Yes. With the hand raised. Greg? Thank you. Name and address, please. Mr. Bentley, you're muted. Right. Here. Greg, we can't hear you. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Hello? Could you please, uh, oh, he is unmuted, right? He is. Okay. This is microphone. He might be calling in. He might be. Uh, <clears throat> can can I ask a, a real quick question um, while you're waiting? Sure. Is, can we submit can we submit photographs of what the area looked like um, originally? I don't see why not. You've got uh, attorney winner and Steve's email and everybody. You can send it to everyone. I think you have everybody on here. Yeah. Jen Kucher would be the number one, probably. Okay. okay. Greg is having trouble. He's back on. I'm not sure if he Okay. Board, any, um, Katie Grace, anything else? No, I didn't. I, I appreciate that probably any photographs that would be submitted, you know, to the, to everybody um, would probably be helpful in trying to achieve the original grades before the project started. And of course, we have what we have, but I know, I think this is a fantastic plan forward. Um, to try and match that original grade to have a plan for us to look at next time. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, 
Greg, you're having te technical difficulties. Maybe pass your question along to the board through Mr. Ziss. Um, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Steve, you're all set, right? Yes, I am. Okay. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Motion made by Mike. Second. Second by Eric. All those in favor? Eric, Eric, side. Mike Greco, aye. KG. Technical difficulty. <laughs> Another one. Hello. Um, Tracy Sharkey, I. So we'll. No, Katie Grace is having a problem, so let's. Uh, no. We're good. I'm back. Okay. I'm good though. I. I. Okay. I. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.